Hey everyone, this is Scott from SurveyMedia.com, and in this video I'm going to be covering Perf Matters, a premium complimentary WordPress optimization plugin that helps to clean up your WordPress website. So Perf Matters is a paid plugin. It can be purchased on the perfmatters.io. I'll include a link in the description. And the plugin allows you to basically clean up your website. It's not like auto-optimize, and it's not a caching plugin like Cache Enabler or WordPress Rocket. It instead allows you to clean up the what's loading on the website itself. It's basically just a way to tune the website without just merging everything together. So I'm gonna go through each of the settings. I'm gonna give you my thoughts and opinions, and I'm gonna to try to address the common questions that I get regarding the plugin. So when you first get the plugin installed, you're gonna to go to settings and perf matters, and this is when you're gonna get the admin panel. It's fairly straightforward and easy to use, and it comes with a lot of useful options. So the first option is to disable Emoji.js. Very simple feature. It will remove emojis from the front end of the website. I recommend this option is enabled. Disable embeds will disable the WP embed JS, which allows you to embed your own post within another post by pasting the URL and it'll give you a nice little preview of the post item. If you're not using this functionality, you can go ahead and check this option. Then there is the remove query string setting. This will allow you to remove query strings from static resources. One thing I recommend is if you're using Divi notably, check this option to make sure nothing is broken. I notice oftentimes with this plugin, it does cause issues with certain page builders. It may cause them to stop loading or cause an error. Just make sure that if you enable this option that you check your page builder to make sure that functionality remains. Disable XML RPC. If you're not using the WordPress mobile app or Jetpack, you can typically go ahead and disable this option. If you are though, you are not able to disable the XML RPC. I have another video though that goes into how you can protect XML RPC using a Cloudflare page rule. And then you have the option to remove jQuery migrate. Most WordPress sites can probably get by without using jQuery migrate. It's mostly just included as a means of backwards compatibility if themes and plugins are using older jQuery features that are no longer used in 1.12.4, but more or less you can disable this option. You can hide the WordPress version, which just removes the generator tag that's included on the front end, and I recommend doing that. You can go ahead and remove the Windows Live Writer manifest link because I'm assuming most people aren't using Windows Live Writer. If you are, you cannot remove this option. You can remove the really simple discovery link, which can open you up to getting spammed using trackbacks and pingbacks. More or less though, if you have that option already disabled, you don't need to check this, but I typically just check it anyways to clean up the header. And to show you what the header looks like before doing anything, this is basically where we're at right here. Then we have the remove short link. If you have Jetpack, you can go ahead and remove the short link that it generates. By default, short links are not generated on the front end unless you're using Jetpack or an older plugin. You could disable RSS feeds, but for the most part, I typically recommend leaving RSS feeds there. You could choose to remove RSS links, which will just remove the links here instead of disabling the RSS feeds altogether. Um, depending on how you are using RSS feeds on your website, it's probably better to just remove the links if you don't want users to actively subscribe to them or if you want them to subscribe, but only under certain conditions, maybe they have a submit and then it automatically signs them up to there with their email, then you can go ahead and remove them from the header. I'm going to leave them enabled though because I still use them quite often. You could disable self pingbacks, but pingbacks and trackbacks should already be disabled. If they aren't, then go ahead and check this option so that way you stop pinging your own website. You could disable the REST API. The default should be enabled more or less because Many themes and plugins and even the WordPress backend do make use of the REST API. So the default should be checked. You can though choose to remove the REST API on the front end if you don't have some sort of app or third party that's connecting to the REST API link. But more or less, I leave it enabled. You can disable dash icons for the users that are not logged in. This is very useful because dash icons tends to be loaded very frequently on the front end even when it's not necessary. So this will make sure it's enabled when you're logged in. So things like the admin bar still have their nice little icons, but when you're logged out, it makes sure that the assets are not being delivered to reduce the amount of page 
size that's being sent to the user. Dash icons even compressed as a little over 30 kilobytes of raw CSS, which can be a major hindrance for your users. You could disable Google Maps if you have the Google Maps API being loaded. I don't really recommend embedding the Google Maps via the Google Maps API. I recommend using the iframe embed, that way you can lazy load it. You can choose to disable Google Fonts all outright. If you do this though, you're likely going to have major differences in your text files. So your text right here, like the this nice little font here, whatever it is, it will be removed all altogether. And your style may look very bleak. It'll look standard Windows font that's available like Times New Roman. So you have to make sure that if you're disabling Google fonts, you either have a fallback font declared or you're locally hosting the fonts in the first place. You can disable the password strength meter. If you're using something like WooCommerce, I recommend disabling this. This file can be around like 300 kilobytes compressed and it's quite bulky. Um, Honestly, there's just no reason to deliver that large of a payload on the front end for most websites, so I recommend checking this option. If you don't want to use comments at all, you could simply choose to disable comments outright, um, or you could choose to just remove the comment author URL here. More or less, I like to keep comments enabled because it allows users to make comments and revisit the page and be active if you're trying to form some kind of community or brand. But if you don't care about any of that, make sure you just disable it here and it'll take care of the rest. Then they have the option to lazy load. This will add the new loading equal lazy attribute to images. And if you use this use native option, if you don't though, this will use a standard JavaScript file that will lazy load images that are not in the viewport. And as you scroll down, they will begin to load in. You could choose to either you can choose to disable the Heartbeat API everywhere or only allow it when editing posts and pages. You can typically use it for posts and pages, and then I recommend bumping the Heartbeat frequency up to 60 seconds. You can limit your post revisions to a certain amount. Post revisions can get really out of hand. Typically, no more than five is honestly necessary. If you have some sort of backup system in place where you have routine backups being taken, then you could probably be fine with just disabling them altogether. You can reduce or increase the autosave interval as you like. If you're somebody who writes a very long blog post, it might be better to have a longer autosave period. That way the database isn't getting hammered by a very large blog post every minute. So every five minutes can severely reduce the impact of editing your pages on the server while you're writing. And then you can change the login URL and it will prevent the user from going to wp-admin to login or wp-login.php directly. I'm not a big fan of this method and the reason is, is a lot of plugins and themes that may be using some kind of an Ajax pop-up model feature, this can break them outright. I typically recommend what you do is you use some sort of a firewall or something on the server or something like WordFence or something like Cloudflare to protect the login pages altogether from brute force attacks. For WooCommerce, you can typically go ahead and enable the disable scripts. What this will do is it doesn't disable WooCommerce scripts. It runs a check and says only to load them on WooCommerce related pages. Now, if your whole website is a WooCommerce store or the front end is where you're listing your products, you'll have to leave the scripts loading on there or else they just simply won't work. But you can more or less, if you have a website that's a blog, but you may also sell some products on there, you can just check this option and it will remove the scripts from the non-essential pages, which can reduce page load and improve load time for those pages. Disable cart fragmentation will remove the WooCommerce Ajax cart fragments request, which can improve the load time. This request, depending on your server, especially if you're using a bad host, uh, GoDaddy, HostGator, Bluehost, etc., they can take several seconds to respond. So if you're not using an Ajax cart, or you don't need an Ajax cart, what you could do is you can go into WooCommerce and set it to redirect the users to the cart, and disable the cart fragments here, and this will improve the load time of your website. Disable the status meta box. What this does is it will remove that little box that appears in your dashboard page that WooCommerce adds to show you how many orders have been received, how much money you've made that month, and how many orders are processing or canceled. And the reason it disables this is on very large stores, this can really hinder the loading speed of the dashboard. 
and it's a quite bulky request so i actually typically recommend to disable it it's not really necessary if you're not needing the data and if you do need the data you're going to go to the woocommerce dashboard anyways where you're going to get that data so you don't need it on the default wordpress dashboard url and then there's the disable widgets this will just outright disable woocommerce widgets if you're using a WooCommerce website, you're probably using their widgets, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. You have the CDN option, which is quite effective, but what I typically recommend is, is if you have a caching plugin installed and they can support it, I recommend using their implementation. The reason is, is even though this is quite effective, oftentimes what happens is when you're using this implementation, the merged assets or files or whatever the caching plugin is doing or modifying, they may not be served from the CDN. And that's because this plugin's rewrites may be firing before the merged CSS or JS is being added to the page. But if you're not using anything at all, you can go ahead and try this option. It's basically equivalent to something like cache and uh, not cache enabler, CDN enabler, their companion plugin. This is basically just that, but in a different, nicer interface. Google Analytics, what this does is it will allow you to locally host Google Analytics. You'll include your tracking ID, and it does include some features. Now, there is an important feature in this. It does include Monster Insights. So if you're using Monster Insights, this will rewrite the URL and host the JS file locally. If you're using SiteKit, which is my recommended plugin, this plugin doesn't support that yet. You have the extras features, which this is where all the good stuff starts coming in, in my opinion. This is what makes this plugin actually worth it. You get something called the script manager, and we're gonna go into this because it is quite useful. But before we do, the DNS prefetch will allow you to include DNS requests that you wanna prefetch, notably um, like something like fonts.gstatic.com, which is the actual URL of the Google font files that are being loaded. So the fonts.googleapis.com is where your browser is downloading the CSS, but fonts.gstatic is where the browser is actually going to download the WAF2 files to serve to the browser. You can include that URL either in the prefetch or in the pre-connect headers. Doesn't really matter too much. This is an advanced optimization feature though. So you will need to have somebody who can properly diagnose what your website needs to start adding them here. I don't recommend just adding every third party URL that's coming up in the DNS prefetch and a suggestion tool that you may be using because oftentimes what happens is if you have a lot of third parties or you have one third party that redirects a lot and the biggest one that does this all the time is tracking scripts, then this can cause the browser to download 50 plus requests on the initial load and I see this all the time and it oftentimes leads mobile devices to be slowed down. Pre-connecting is exactly the same, but more important. Pre-connecting actually opens up, think of it as like opening up a door for assets to come through that URL. But every time you open up another door, you're just adding more weight to the browser. So don't just pre-connect every asset that's being loaded. Pre-connect to the URLs that you know are gonna be requested, fonts.gstatic.com you know at some point the browser will be downloading from there and it'll be downloading several requests. So you wanna keep that door open so that way there's no wait for your fonts to be downloaded. But you don't need to do it for some chat widget that you found online because it, first of all, it's not an essential feature for the users and it's gonna be serving from multiple different URLs anyways because the servers don't serve everything from chatwidget.com where you may have got the widget. And then you have the option to add a blank favicon if you have a situation where for some reason you don't have a favicon declared, this will just add something a favicon icon to be loaded so that way it doesn't come up in performance tests. But everybody should have some sort of favicon loaded for their website. You can add header and footer code here. This will just output right in the header or in the footer of the website. You could choose to clean uninstall. This will remove all settings from perf matters when you deactivate the plugin and delete it. And then accessibility mode will disable the use of the visual UI elements and then it will make it easier if you depend on a screen reader. But now we're going to go to the one feature that I actually really like about this, the script manager. So asset cleanup and some other plugins offer the ability to load and unload CSS and JS 
from the front end of the website. This allows you to take it very much a step further. So this is a website and it has BuddyPress, BBPress, all the whole nine yards being loaded on the front end. And the thing about loading all assets on every page is it requires a lot of bytes to be sent when they're not necessary. I'm very much a fan, it's called code splitting for those of you who want to know more of a technical term. Code splitting is where you take a, see this giant CSS file that the theme loads. Instead of it being served as one giant file, it will split it into multiple files. So Genesis does this for pretty much all their themes. The front page has specific styles that are being loaded. So it splits it into a front dash styles and it loads it on the front end, only on the home page. So this allows the rest of the pages to render a lot quicker. So we are now going to go through and just show you how this feature generally works. So let's look at BuddyPress. I can either uncheck all these options here to not load the plugin, or I could choose to not load BuddyPress at all. And I can choose to do a couple things. I can either remove it everywhere, which I would do if, I'm, if I notice a redundant asset being called. So for instance, if there's multiple font awesome URLs being loaded, then you don't need to load it everywhere. You can also choose to just disable it for the current URL, or you can use a form of regex, which is a little bit more complicated. We're gonna just disable it for the current URL because this is the page we're gonna be optimizing. And we're gonna hop over to the settings real quick, just to show you some extra cool, a little more hidden features in this tool. So one thing you can do is hide the disclaimer, but you can also display archives. So archive posts will no longer be grouped with their post type. I recommend enabling this. Archives can also be optimized, especially categories and other forms of taxonomy that you have. So we're gonna go back over here. We're gonna to go to BuddyPress. We're just gonna to choose to disable it on the current URL. But what, else, what other we can do is go to everywhere. We can add exceptions. So what you can do is you can choose to say, well, the BuddyPress assets don't really need to be loaded on your post because they're not BuddyPress pages. You could probably argue that you don't need to load them on any of your archive URLs too, your tags, these general ones that the theme loaded, but the forums and the topics you probably want to load it because there's probably BuddyPress dependent styles that BBPress is loading. So now what this does is it's disabling it everywhere and we're adding the exceptions to be, hold on, I did this the inverse way. And we're going to just say load them on the forums and the topics and then for the forums and the topics, and then we can actually include like the URLs here via regex for the members page, the groups page and the profile page and so on and so forth to exclude them. And we'll go ahead and check those out here in a little bit, but we can just do this for every single plugin that we know are not being used. So BB press is definitely not being used on this homepage. We could just, just disable it on this current URL. The Huber plugin, well, it's probably using its own short codes on this page, even though the file is empty. And we can go through and do this for every asset that's being loaded on every single page. This, for instance, loads the WP block library CSS, but the home page doesn't use this. There is no CSS being loaded on here that's using the block editor. That's done via Visual Composer. And you can just do this and really hammer it into the ground to fine tune and reduce the load time of your website. And this is what sets this plugin apart from some of the other optimization plugins. This menu is super easy to use. I wish that there were some additional features. Um, for instance, when you have the option to load WooCommerce assets only on the WooCommerce pages, I feel like they should have something for BBPress and BuddyPress and something to make it easier to load them for pages that are a little bit more global. So for instance, the BBPress I could choose to disable it everywhere, but I have no options to control it for BuddyPress here. And BuddyPress is a weird plugin in the WordPress sphere because of how it's built and how it runs. But BBPress is used on BuddyPress pages, so we have to make sure it loads there. I have a companion plugin I've written on my website to help with that, but it's not in this feature, in this plugin itself. I think I'm gonna end this video here about Perf Matters. Remember, this is a paid plugin and it's a great companion if you already are trying to optimize your website for the best that it can be. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll try to help you out. Remember what I said about the remove query strings feature? If you use a page builder, make sure to make sure it doesn't break anything. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.